Gather round, Exiles, because today we are covering a variety of topics. This is a mystery box of information brought to you by viewer requests in my brain. To start things off, every character you make will use flasks. These items make a huge impact on how your build will turn out. Flasks either give you a buff for a set duration or restore your health and mana. Flasks cost charges to use along with having a maximum number of charges. This will limit how many times in a row you can use a flask before you run out of charges. Killing monsters will give you a flask charge thus making it easy to keep them up throughout the zone as you're constantly generating more charges as you slay monsters. But once you get to a boss fight, your flasks will eventually run out, unless you're a pathfinder. So you want to manage these flasks wisely. Now we the player are able to have up to 5 flasks, and we want to optimize these flasks for our specific use cases. A general rule of thumb I would give you is, you want to cover your quality of life and survival cases first, then fill in the rest of the flasks with damage. But I also can't stop you from grabbing 5 damage flasks, so feel free to do so. You're a free person, you can do what you want. For quality of life and survival flasks, most of the utility flasks have specialized strengths. For example, if you want a defensive flask and you're an armor based character, I would not recommend a jade flask, but rather a granite flask because it offers armor which synergizes with your character. These choices are completely dependent on the character you make as to what utility flasks are the best to use. I can't cover every possibility, so I'll leave that up to you to do some research based on the build you're making, what flask will be best for your scenario. Now that you've chosen your flasks, let's craft these bad boys. Like all items in the game, flasks have prefixes and suffixes, but they are strictly limited to magic rarity and can only have one of each of these things. Prefixes on flasks are all mods that increase uptime. I've checkmarked the ones you should use. If you're using the other ones that aren't checkmarked, your mother may disown you, and that's not my fault. Now looking at the suffixes, we see they all add secondary effects to the flask. I've marked out the ones I would recommend and why to use them. Generally these mods cover holes in your build. For example, if you don't have freeze immunity in your build, it is very crucial to grab it on a flask as it is a lifesaver. Shout out to curse immunity by the way. This makes map mods like temporal chains livable rather than a living nightmare every time it's rolled onto a map you're about to run. Now to craft these flasks, it's pretty simple. You just want to grab whatever flasks you have, quality them up, then transmute them to make them magic, alt spam them till you get the prefix you want, and then you can suffix craft on the exact suffix you need with a bestiary craft. I have outlined exactly which beast mods give you which suffixes. Like flasks being used with every character, sextants can also be used with every character. Sextants are a special currency that can be applied to watchstones to add temporary bonuses to the maps you run within a region outlined by a yellow string. The temporary bonus lasts three uses, which means you get the bonus for your next three maps you run within that region. Since you can socket up to four of these watch zones, you can have up to four sextants applying to a map at one time. There are three tiers of sextants. Each tier of the sextants gives better versions of each of the mods. Along with new sextant mods, the lower tier sextants couldn't even roll to begin with. The best sextant mods are only found using the awakened sextants, but typically the better the sextant mod, the harder it is to roll. Generally speaking, sextants are almost always worth applying to maps because they usually add monsters and rewards, but they can be somewhat tedious to continually reapply, so it's up to you to decide whether or not it's worth to apply them or not. The height of sextants is creating the juiciest, most rewarding, and succulent maps possible, almost indistinguishable from a perfect tropical fruit. I've outlined ways to maximize the juice, but this is coming from a guy who doesn't juice maps on the regular, so this might not be the perfect optimization, but it will point you in the right direction. Like sextants, charges are something I overlooked for longer than I'd care to admit. They give fairly strong bonuses when you have them, they have a timer for how long they last, and will expire. So in order to have maximum benefits from them, you need to be generating them in some way. When making a build, it's always worth asking the question, can I pick up charges somewhere easily? If the answer is yes, you should be doing it. This is your wake-up call. Make me proud. Something extremely important about charges is often overlooked, thanks to it being all the way at the bottom of the wiki page, and having no obvious in-game description of this that I have ever found. But charges actually have a much greater benefit when applied to monsters and minions. This is important to consider because it makes monsters a lot more dangerous and should be respected. Also, if you're making a minion build, the power of charges should absolutely never be overlooked because there are ways to give your minions charges, most notably Necromantic Aegis in combination with Victario's Charity. On to our next unrelated topic, base items. When PoE players say best base, they are referring to the best item within its respective category. They are the foundation of what you are going to craft, so it's important to start your craft from the strongest point. A perfectly crafted item on a bad base will always be worse than a perfectly crafted item on a better base. 
The best item to use is either determined by the implicit it grants or the superior numbers it boasts. I've taken way more time than I should have to make a compilation photo of some of the best bases for their respective categories. I didn't cover every single category, but it only takes one Google search and a few seconds of reading and comparing stats to determine what base to use if you want to craft an item category outside of the ones I've listed here. Getting the correct item base is half the battle. If you plan to craft this item, you definitely want to also be considering its item level as if it's too low it will not be able to roll the mods you want and you might be end up wasting your currency trying to roll mods that can't roll because the item level is too low now go out and craft on good bases my friends actually I lied stick around because I got one last topic to cover in-game tooltip a number that almost always has no accurate meaning this occurs for a plethora of reasons I'm outlining just a few of them here the short answer is simply that it is impossible to predict the future now what do I mean by that? Path of Exile is a game that has many contributing factors when calculating damage. The game engine cannot calculate your damage based on factors it can't possibly know as they will occur in the future upon application of said damage. Examples consist of varying monster defenses. Some monsters will take more damage from your attacks than others will, so the tooltip can't account for this. There are also various debuffs and buffs that you could apply to the monster you're about to fight that the game also doesn't know you're going to apply to them and it doesn't even know you're going to be hitting that monster with those debuffs. These things contribute to many unknowable factors which result in being unable to tell the user how much damage they will do. Besides the unknowable, some effects on damage are not even put into the calculation of the tooltip. For example, as a crit build who uses a diamond flask, a diamond flask greatly increases my crit chance, and therefore my damage, but the game has not been programmed to even calculate the tooltip based on that higher crit chance. The reality is the game engine has to continually run calculations to print out your tooltip damage, and I believe GGG has probably made the decision to avoid spending additional computing power on things like tooltip in order to help the game run more efficiently. At the end of the day, this means tooltip is usually not accurate. However, it is still useful because it can give you a litmus test of sorts if you're choosing between two support gems or two items. Simply trading each one back and forth and checking the tooltip gives you a fairly accurate measurement of this thing does more damage. Say I equip this support gem and I do 2,000 more damage on my tooltip. Generally speaking, that means that support gem is doing more damage for you and you should use it. Ultimately, you can get an accurate number by booting up good old P.O.B. But I often prefer the old-fashioned way, to go in-game and test my damage against a boss I'm familiar with. This has been another Crash Course. Hopefully you learned something useful. Thank you all for watching. Have a fantastic day, friends.